Hi, I'm Kat, one of the test experts at Magoosh, and today I want to talk a little bit about these at-home AP exams. So this was quite an announcement by the College Board recently, and of course this is in response to COVID-19. All the AP exams in May are going to be administered at home, remotely. And so obviously a lot of you, students, parents, teachers have questions about how this is going to happen and uh, questions about the best ways to study and prepare for these big changes. And I'll be addressing some of those today. We at Magoosh have been thinking a lot about students recently and uh, wishing you and your families the best. It's been a very challenging few months. And I know for some of you in particular, some families in particular. And so do you know that we're thinking of you and if there are ways we can support you, we would like to be able to do so. Also, if you haven't already, please uh, hit the subscribe button. That way you'll get notified whenever we add new videos. So first, a little bit about the exam. These are going to be 45 minutes in length, shorter than typical. Most of the exams are going to be two questions long, some will be one, and they'll all be free response style. So that means more like an essay style exam response. And for science and math tests, this usually looks more like responding to a graph or a chart with a series of sub questions. They can be answered on a computer, tablet, uh, phone, you can handwrite them and then take a picture and submit them that way. Do you know that each question gets counted separately in terms of the time you have? So 45 minutes is how long you have for the entire exam, but the time limits for each of those questions is something that is uh, monitored as well. They're going to be open note, open book, However, College Board is going to be taking measures to make sure that plagiarism uh, doesn't happen, is caught. Also, any kind of collaboration is against their policy. So that means no talking with other students, either in your home, if you have someone else in your house who's taking the same exam, or uh, like online. So don't have any browser windows open, just don't even go there, um, even if you have innocent intentions. Just keep all of that types of type of communication um, uh, off the table because we don't know the details about how they'll be monitoring this, but there probably will be a few different types of software they'll be using to try and make sure that students aren't doing this. The exam still will be scaled one to five, scored anything three and above uh, counts towards college credit. Colleges will be accepting these, even though they're unusual exam circumstances. And they'll all be taking place May 11th through May 22nd. I've linked some of the different sites that the College Board has been using to post their updates, their schedules, their free study resources. That's all below this video, so check that out. Also, all of the exams of the same type, so for any given exam, say AP Calculus, everybody will be taking it at the same time, which unfortunately does disadvantage people in Asia, Australia, because they'll be taking it in the middle of the night. I hope that none of you are in that situation. If you are, I'm sorry. Um, it will take extra preparation to make sure that you're alert at that time of day or night. The exams are only going to cover information that students are expected to have received from their teachers through early March. And obviously every teacher moves at a different speed. So some of you maybe didn't quite get to that point. Some of you probably went beyond it. Uh, the College Board has posted what they expect you to know. So check that out. The exams can be taken on a computer, tablet, phone, or you can handwrite the exam and take a picture and upload it that way, which is probably how most people taking the science and math exams will be submitting their answers. Okay, so what about preparing for these? What are some of the top tips you should be aware of? First, think carefully about which type of technology and which device you'll be using. Make sure you choose something that's reliable, that you're comfortable with. Think about where you can set up that's near uh, outlets so you can have it charged. 
Uh, what's better in your household? Wi-Fi or cell coverage? Think, think a little bit about that. Don't use the best device in your house at the expense of using something that you're very comfortable with. So being comfortable, being familiar, um, that's going to be the more important factor. Reliable first, comfort second, and then things like um, technologically advanced would be a lesser consideration. If you're not sure or it makes you nervous just to think about, consider just writing your answer on paper and taking a picture and submitting that that way. If you need a device, College Board is uh, asking students to submit a form that they've they've created and we have linked the, that below this video and you can tell them a little bit about your situation and from my understanding they will be lending students devices. Another tip, make sure to use free response questions to prep. So this is not a memorization based test obviously. This is all about synthesizing ideas, organizing your thoughts, thinking about how concepts, ideas, terms connect over periods of time or over different theoretical perspectives, depending on what kind of an exam you're taking. And so you want to practice with that type of material. Another tip, make sure to use the College Board test platform sometime before your exam or exams, some of you will be taking more than one, that is going to be available. They're going to be doing a tutorial on it May 4th. And so that way you can kind of get a sense, like going through the step-by-step -step motions of how are you going to receive the question or prompt and how are you going to submit it? How's the timing gonna work? It's I think it's a very crucial step in, in the process and it'll just reduce the amount of extra anxiety you have when you actually go to take the exam. If possible, try to do that in conjunction with actually timing yourself. So using the 45 minutes, dividing up those 45 minutes by each question if your exam has more than one question. Another key tip, don't rely too much on notes. If I was a student approaching this, what I would do would be go through my class notes highlight certain key concepts, dates, just so they're identifiable and quickly um, visually pop, you might say. And then I would create another few sheets of notes that are condensed versions, maybe outlines, maybe lists of ideas and concepts that go together. And I would practice and study for the exam by actually writing responses to free response questions rather than trying to learn things, rather than trying to re rewrite my notes all in detail in a million different ways. So just have a few pages of condensed notes and then spend a lot of time outlining and practicing responses. And last, make sure that you practice with the College Board resources, free resources, posted both on their website and then also a YouTube channel that they've created. They've been doing live classes, demonstrations, and they've also been recording those so students can take advantage of them even if they can't attend the live functions. So that is all posted below as well. If you want more information on taking the AP exams at home, go to our Magoosh blog post on at home AP exams that's linked below. And also, if you have other ideas, suggestions for topics that we can cover on in future videos, please let us know. We listen to students. We're thinking about you during this time. We plan to release several more videos over the next few months, and we would love to hear from you. So good luck. Take care. Be safe. Be healthy. I'll talk to you next time.